Good Wednesday morning. Glad to be with you again today and um, glad you could join me for a few minutes of uh, devotions with Pastor Paul. Hope uh, this day finds you well and uh, glad that we could have this time together. Um, just a reminder, starting October 11th, uh, we'll be moving from one to two services. Um, we, we have to keep you know, we have to spread out the uh, numbers in the sanctuary, which is a good thing. We want you to keep coming back, um, and uh, we want you to be part of what we're doing. I told you yesterday that we would try to announce as soon as possible what we'll be doing with Splash Kids, and um, we were able to nail that down yesterday. So Splash Kids will meet at 10 o'clock. There will only be spa Splash Kids at the 10 o'clock service. So the 830 no uh, Splash Kids, 10 o'clock Splash Kids, and starting October 11th, uh, we'll have those um, two two options um, once again, uh, 8.30 and 11. Um, just finding you know more and more people uh, like the option of the earlier rather than the 11 o'clock. So, and we want to try and spread out um, those numbers a as much as possible and um, keep everybody safe, keep you know, keep everything moving, but, um, we'll see how the 30 goes really looking, uh, looking forward to it. So, um, to serve is a lot more work, but, uh, it's good. Hey, also we're rebuilding our ushering team, our greeting team, our connection team, our children's ministry teams. One of the things with, you know, so many people not feeling comfortable about coming back yet, um, which is, Listen, we get it. We understand. So there's this isn't a, a pressure sales pitch or anything like that. But uh, we definitely um, are way, way um, under, under, um, under, uh, you know, fund. I don't know. We don't have enough people. That's what I'm trying to say. So if you are interested and praying about and thinking about um, the possibility of any of those ministries, of course, our sound, media, you know, tech teams, um, those are really, you know, same people running those every week. We would train you if it's something you're interested in and we'd be willing to come and help us out with. Um, really, everything's just kind of lower than it normally is, and that's, you know, to be expected, but we're rebuilding. Um, I know it's kind of funny. It's built, uh, I was thinking about uh, Biden's uh, presidential things, building back better, but uh, not that I, no political statement here, none, so do not, do not. But uh, we are. We want to build back better. No politics. Um, so just stealing that, uh, as I was thinking about it, stealing that from uh, Mr. Biden and his team. Um, but we could use the help. Definitely. So pray about that. Say, you know what, God, um, where can I plug in and, and you know, where can I serve? Um, because, you know, we always get more out of when we put in. And, and that's just the truth of it. That it's not some kind of sales pitch either. Um, we really, truly get more out of it when we put something in. So um, if you want to get reconnected and you want to, you know, this is a great way to do it. You can help out with George on the ushering team. I'm overseeing the um, the uh, greeting team right now um, and, and basically the connections team um, at this point. Uh, working with Jane with that. Lori, of course, is overseeing our children's ministry. Um, and then we have uh, Chris Farrell is sound. Uh, Megan um, Riccio is our uh, media um, as far as pro presenter and the stuff that's in Sanctuary. And uh, then our video team um, is D and um, D Sanchez and uh, Vanessa uh, at the church. So you know, those are areas that you can get involved. Those are like our most critical needs right now. Um, so if you have an outgoing personality, come help us out in ushers and greeters uh, or our connection team. Um, I mean, if you just love kids, you just love kids and, um, you know, you want to see our kid, our next generation fulfill the God potential that they have, then, then jump in at that. Okay, I've taken more time, but 830 and 10 o'clock will be our new service time starting uh, October 11th. October 11th, 8.30 and 10 o'clock. Okay, 
Here we go. So we've been talking about community. We're going to start winding this down over the next three days. Um, I've spread this out over two weeks, but there's just so many different, I, this could go on for months and months and months and months. But um, one of the things um, about community is that community is um, always adapting. Community is always adapting. Um, I'll read the scripture here in just a moment, but Paul illustrates this for us. Um, he makes it clear that wherever he goes and whatever audience he's with, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or it's a group of people, Paul adapts the gospel for that particular group or that particular individual. Now, he's not changing. He doesn't change his core values. That's not what we're talking about here. Well, man, if I'm uh, out with, uh, you know, if I'm out with heavy drinkers, well, then I drink heavy. If I'm, you know, if I'm out with people who swear, well, then I, you know, I use that kind of language. And no, 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 that's not what adapting is. Adapting is finding common ground in order to make a connection. Now, look what he says, okay? I'm in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 19 through 23. Even though... I'm a free man with no master. I have become a slave to all people to bring many to Christ. When I was with the Jews, I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. When I was with those who follow the Jewish law, I lived under that law. Even though I'm not subject to the law, I did this so I could bring Christ to those who are under the law. When I'm with Gentiles who do not follow the Jewish law, I too live apart from that law so that I can bring them to Christ, but I do not ignore the law of God. I obey the law of Christ. So here's what he says. He says, even though we're no longer subject to Jewish tradition because Christ has fulfilled the law, when I'm with Jews in order to share the gospel, I submit myself to their customs and their laws. But when I'm with Gentiles, because the law, now listen, if the if we were still under the law, then he wouldn't adjust, okay? But he says, because I'm not under the law, I can subject myself to the law when I'm with Jews. That's okay, that's an addition to. But when I'm with Gentiles, I don't have to be under the law. So I live as a Gentile out from under the law, the Jewish custom and Jewish laws. Does that make sense? But look what he says. I always, I obey the law of Christ. The unnegotiable, the non-negotiables, I never, ever, I never, ever um, give up or I never negotiate that. I, 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 I stay clear to my conscience. So he goes on, verse 22, he says, when I'm with those who are weak, I share their weakness. I don't become weak. I share their weakness. For I want to bring the weak to Christ. Yes, I try to find common ground with everyone, doing everything I can to save some. I do everything to spread the good news and share in its blessing. So here's what Paul's saying. It's Paul saying, I adapt. Um, one, one of the saddest things I have ever witnessed over my years in, in, in the faith is to watch people who just will not... Um, give at all they want everyone to adapt to them they want everyone to live under their convictions for instance if you're with someone who is a smoker now listen you could say hey you know for health benefits or whatever but i've watched people say ah, you know what that's sin don't don't do, don't do that around me i don't want you to defile me well, they're not a believer. They're not under the same, you know, convictions that you have. Um, or when people, you know, when us as, when we as Christ followers correct someone when they use language that we don't like. Now, listen, I get it. You know, it, it, there, there's things that are offensive. But you know what I don't do? I don't try to subject somebody under my convictions because they're not under my convictions. They haven't come to faith. And so does that mean that I start swearing and using foul language around them? No, but at the same time, I don't expect them to change for me. What I do is I find, I find points of, of common interest 
that I can have conversations with them. And so what I found is this, that when they find out that I'm a believer and they find out that I'm a Christ follower, many times they'll go, oh, I, I'm so sorry I, I used that language around you. And my response is usually this, listen, I'm not asking you to change anything on my behalf. While I appreciate you acknowledging my convictions and being sensitive to them, thank you. I'm not asking you to change anything for me. And what I found is when I adapt for others, they're much more open to what I have to share. Now, let me say this again. Adapting does not mean that we become chameleons, right? That we start changing our values. What I never, what I never compromise is my values. There are things that are absolutely non-negotiables for me. But the things that are negotiables, I don't get caught up on that. Okay? And at the same time, I also don't, I, I don't um, put my convictions on somebody else. That's wrong. That's wrong. They're not under, they're not under the same convictions that I have. And so it's wrong of me to expect them to change who they are. When Christ changed them and their heart changes and they begin to desire to become more like Christ, well, then that's going to happen. And that's the Holy Spirit's work. It's not mine. So we want to be adaptable. If I'm with, if I'm with a, a group of, of people who enjoy uh, Star Trek, you know, I, I don't know a lot about it, but I join in the conversation with what I do know. If I'm with someone who enjoys uh, working on cars or someone who enjoys hunting and fishing and those type of things, I adapt in order to win the opportunity to share the good news. That's what Paul's talking about. As community of Christ followers, we need to be adaptable. So I want to encourage you today, adapt. Put yourself maybe in, in uncomfortable places. See, that's the other part of this. Let me take just a second to share this. What we tend to do as Christ followers, we tend to close in our borders and put ourselves only in places where we are comfortable. Shame on us. We should constantly, like Paul, be looking for places to share the gospel. New places, uncomfortable places. Places that we don't necessarily have a lot of commonality. But you know what? We have some commonality with everybody. So we find that commonality, we adapt, and we become ambassadors for Jesus Christ. What did he say? He said, I do everything I can to save some. Who knows who you and I may be able to have a conversation with, may be able to start a friendship with, may be able to start a relationship with that God puts on our pathway that we could see come to faith. So your homework today, be adaptable. Heavenly Father, help us to adapt so that we can win some. Help us to look around and see those that you place in our pathway that we can love and that we can share Jesus Christ with. And in the process, we pray that we'd be able to see many come to faith. We ask this in the name of Jesus for your glory. Amen. Hey, we want to tell you about one more thing right here at the end before I sign off. Um, so we're not able to do Light the Night this year, but what we've decided to do is we're going to do a trunk or treat in the parking lot at the church. So we need you to, we'll put a sign up uh, on the website here real soon. We need you to think about bringing your car, your truck, your Jeep, your whatever, and decorate it, do it up, go crazy, and uh, bring lots and lots of candy because we want to open this up to the, car, the to the community. So um, we'll have a sign up. We'll see how many cars that we're able to accommodate to, to have people come. Um, but what we do need, and we need it fast and furious, we need candy. Okay, so we do this every year, but we're just going to have to do it again this year. We need you to begin to um, go out, purchase big bags of candy, 
and uh, bring it in and we're going to do trunk or treat because uh, we don't want to lose momentum and we don't want to lose the opportunity to um, to touch people's lives. So what we'll do is we're going to put out some, uh, we'll put out a speaker with just Jesus music playing and uh, we'll have all kinds of uh, literature and, and stuff you know, inviting people to the church. We'll even open up the church and let folks come in and take a look at it and see what it's like. It's a Saturday night, so we'll have to clean up afterwards and get ready for Sunday. Who cares if we come into church on Sunday and it's a mess? I, I don't care. As long as we can adapt and love people. So this is our adapting. Um, we're not going to do like the night. We can't, but we can do a trunk or treat. So we, uh, we need all the help we can get. And we need all the trunks we can get. So um, we need you to really think about, pray about, and uh, jump in and help us out with this. Okay, thank you so much for a few minutes of your time. I will see you Thursday morning, which is tomorrow. Have a great, no, today's Tuesday. I've been saying Wednesday this whole time. I apologize right here at the end. It's Tuesday morning. I will see you tomorrow for Wednesday morning. Wow, right at the end. Bless you.